Welcome again to our third unit where we're talking about the ancient Greek civilizations. Today, we're going to continue with the, the unfortunate enemy, the Persians. And today's read aloud title is Thermopylae, the Persians strike again. Before we learn, talk about this next big battle, actually it's a couple of battles we'll be talking about. Before we talk about these big battles, we're gonna first go through our vocabulary words. I will read the words, again, you will repeat them after me. Independent, summoned, mission, grand, Spartan, Ideal, democracy, tribute. Which one of these words uh, would be used if you're writing a sentence and you're talking about how your mom called you to go into your room to clean it? Yeah, and we would use the word summoned if your mom summoned you to the room. Remember, as we go through our Greek civilizations, we're talking about these five different components in every read aloud. And let's go over our chart again. And we added a new one into our chart. If you look at the bottom right here, we added another contribution. That contribution was from yesterday's read aloud marathon. Why was a marathon a contribution again? Yeah, remember, it's a contribution because we're still doing it today, even though it was used in the past. Remember, we're here in Greece, and here's the uh, Greek, here's where the ancient Greeks were settled. It's here in the orange. But remember, hinting over here was the Persian Empire. And as we zoom out, there's that little spot we were talking about, but the Persian Empire is just huge empire. And and of course, I would be pretty scared of this empire. And they are ruled by, ruled by this kind of scary king, uh, King Darius. Tell me about a time that you were super brave. And let's make a prediction today. Do you think the outcome will be different for the Persians this time? So do you think the Persians will win in this next battle we're going to be talking about? So after today's reading, you should be able to summarize the main events and explain the significance of the Battle of Thermopylae and also demonstrate the understanding of the word prefer. As we go through today's read aloud, listen carefully to find out whether or not your predictions are correct about the, another battle between the Greeks and the Persians. King Darius of Persia failed to conquer Greece and died not long after the Greeks won the Battle of Marathon. Darius's son, Xerxes, that's who you see in this picture here, became the king of Persia. His anger at the Greeks for defeating his father worked inside of him until he could no longer stand it. Ten years after Marathon, King Xerxes sat planning how to how Persia would attack Greece again. This time, he thought, Persia will have so many soldiers and ships that it will not fail. Why do you think King Xerxes wanted Persia to fight the Greeks again? Xerxes gathered tens of thousands of soldiers led by his finest troops. Even Xerxes, however, did not have enough ships to carry that many men to Greece by sea. We will go over land from Asia down into Greece, he commanded. This means that this meant that the Persians would have to cross a mile-wide channel of water that lay between Asia and northern Greece. So a channel is a saleable route between two bodies of water. So the Persians had to cross the channel of Hellespont to travel by land to Greece. The word channel can also refer to 
the television station. Xerxes told his Navy captains, we will cross the channel on an enormous floating bridge. Spread out your ships in rows and tie them together. Then lay wooden platforms across the space between the ships over which my army can pass. You can kind of see how they did that. So they parked all the boats and then the men walked across the boats like this because they didn't have enough boats to carry them across and they didn't want to go back and forth, back and forth. So they just made one long bridge using boats. Xerxes' vast army, our huge army, succeeded in crossing the decks of 600 ships and moved into Greece. There, they faced another difficulty, Greece's high mountains. To avoid having to travel over these mountains, Xerxes led his army south along a narrow strip of dry land near the eastern coast of Greece called Thermopylae. At the other end of this narrow pass, the Greeks were waiting for him. The Greeks knew that Xerxes' army could not spread out to its full width to attack here, for there are simply there is simply not enough room in the narrow pass between the mountains and the oceans. Instead, here a smaller army might have a chance to win. So, which is the smaller army right now? The Greeks or the Persians. It was the Greeks. With most of the city-states working together, the Greeks had sent 10,000 men to block the Persian march. Led by Spartan king Leonidas, the Greeks took up positions across the full width of Thermopylae. Leonidas told his soldiers, the longer, the longer we can hold the Persians here, the more time it gives the other Greeks to prepare for battle. With the fate of their families always in their mind, Leonidas with his soldiers waited. Leonidas knew that farther south, an Athenian leader named Themistocles was rushing to draw together a fleet of navy ships. Themistocles was sure that the war would be won at sea, for as he had told the other Greeks, the Persians may force their way into Greece, but Xerxes cannot keep bringing food and other supplies to his men here by land. It takes too long, so if we control the sea, the Persians will eventually have to go home. So do you think this will work? Leonidas and his Spartan soldiers had to hold Xerxes at Thermopylae long enough for the Athenian fleet to get into position. So are the Greek city-states working together during this emergency? Soon the Persians reached the place where the Greeks blocked their path. Xerxes sent a message to the Greeks warning them to surrender and ask for mercy. He wrote, I command so many archers that their attack of arrows will block out the sun above you. To this, one of the Spartans jokingly answered, Fine, we prefer to fight in the shade anyways. Prefer means some, to like something better than something else. Did the Greeks really prefer to fight in the shade? Why do you think they said this? After waiting for four days for the Greeks to surrender, the furious King Xerxes gave the word for his Persian army, armies to attack. However, just as the Greeks had predicted, only a small number of Persian soldiers could fit into the narrow pass at once. So their great numbers did not help them. Leonidas and the Greeks drove back one attack after another. Then one of the Persian officers said to Xerxes, O oh, great king, a Greek who lives near here offers to lead us to the Greeks through another pass in the mountains, if you will pay him enough gold. Xerxes smiled. Good. Have him lead half of our men along the other path so that we can come out from behind. Uh-oh. 
the Persians began to move back so they could take the other route. But Leonidas of Sparta saw what was happening. Quickly meeting with the other Greek leaders, he commanded, take your men safely away from here. I will remain behind with 300 of my best Spartan fighters and will force the Persians to take the other longer way around. Why did Leonidas and his men decide to stay behind? Well, they really wanted to hold the Persians back. Remember, they had to buy some time so the uh, Themistocles could get in position to attack. But this is very dangerous for you and your 300 men, another officer pr protested. Once the, Persian, once the Persians came, come through the other pass, they will circle around you and attack you from behind. You will get caught between two Persian forces. Leonidas turned to one of his Spartan officers. What do you think? His friend shrugged. We are Spartans, he said. And that was all, and that was all, and it was enough. Leonidas told the other Greeks, there is your answer. We will stay. Do you think the Spartans were being brave for staying? So the rest of the Greek army quickly retreated out of the narrow pass as the 300 Spartans spread out across the area. Then when they were in position, Leonidas told them, let us fight in such a way that forever after, all Persians will speak of us in amazement and all Greeks in words of pride. Together, the Spartans bravely fought as long as they could. But in the end, the Persians defeated the Spartans and continued on. Leonidas and his 300 Spartans are still remembered more than 2,000 years later for their hero hero heroism or bravery for fighting against such a large army. These Greeks were able to hold the Persians at the pass long enough for the other Greek forces to prepare for battle. This famous act of courage by the Spartans became known as the last stand at Thermopylae. Soon, the Persians continued south and reached Athens. To their shock, they found the city nearly deserted or empty. Meanwhile, Themistocles, the Athenian Navy commander, had moved all of the Greeks to a nearby areas, including an island called Salmis. When Xerxes realized this, he sent for his navy from Persia. Sail over here and attack Salmis, he ordered. So the Persians took a long time to arrive in their ships, and they had to sail close to the land so they could, they could stop at different cities on the way for supplies. But this was exactly what the clever Themistocles had counted on. He had hidden Greek, the Greek navy in the bays and harbors that lay between Salamis and Athens on the Greek mainland. What do you think is going to happen? As in the mountain pass at the Thermopylae, the greater Persian numbers could not help Xerxes in this narrow neck of water. When the Persian ships approached, Themistocles signaled into his ship's captains, attack! From their, hiding, from their hiding places, the smaller, faster Greek ships surprised, surprised the Persians. The larger Persian ships jammed together in the narrow waters could not turn around to defend themselves. Using metal battering rams attached to the bow or the front of the ships, the Greeks smashed into the helpless Persian ships. One after another, the Persian vessels sank. Those few that did not sink sailed away broken and battered. The Greek victory at Salmis was complete. King Xerxes realized, we cannot stay here if we cannot count on our ships to bring us food, medicine, and more soldiers from Persia. Finally, the Persians left Greece. There would be only one more bat land battle the following year, which was won by the Greeks, but nothing compared to the heroic stand by the Greeks at Marathon 
Thermopylae, and Salmis. Finally, the Persian threat was over forever, and the stories of these Greek victories would be told again for years to come. Man, what a heroic stand. I love I just love listening to the bravery from those 300 Spartan soldiers. So why did King Xerxes decide to attack Greece? How did King Xerxes transport tens of thousands of troops into Greece? How did the Greeks defeat the much larger Persian army? What does Sparta's stand at Thermopylae tell us about the Spartans? I think one thing it tells about the Spartans is that they will never give up and that they will, they will always stand up and, be, and show their bravery. So we have our vocab word for today, and our vocabulary word is that word prefer. Repeat that word with me, prefer. So what does the R controlled ER, what sound is it saying in this word? Right at the end, it's saying the ER sound. Does anyone know other spellings that we know that makes that same sound? What do you think that word prefer means? But prefer is to choose or like something more than something else. I put this on here because I prefer Reese's Pieces above M&M's. Some people prefer to walk to school rather than ride the bus. Do you prefer breakfast or dinner? Why? This is a tough one. I think I prefer dinner foods like mashed potatoes and stuff. Def definitely just a little bit more than breakfast. So we had a multiple meaning word, and you heard it in this read aloud. We heard it as this, a channel. It's that body of water that connects two pieces of land. And what, remember, Xerxes had to use his boat. But remember, channel could also mean a little different television station. We do not have a notebook page for today. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about Somebody who's very great. And no, it is not me. I wish it was, though. I hope you enjoyed.